Maybe it'll help me relax if we just talk through the process of bottling, or maybe it'll make me remember something that I will frantically scurry to do tomorrow before bottling the following day. Welcome back to Rewind with Beach Witty because what would you do for a Klondike bar? Today is our second installment of the winemaking series. Today I thought I'd recover something that we haven't covered on uh, the Harvest Vlogs bottling. Bottling is always such a magical experience to people outside of um, outside of the industry or like people that don't work in uh, processing and in the cellar. For me right now, I'm running a bottling. Well, it's already passed by the time you see this, but literally two days from now <laughs> and I cannot be more stressed. Things are going okay. We we filtered today. We're filtering tomorrow, and it's just um, it's a stressful time. You got to make sure, as my boss likes to say, this is your last chance to screw the wine up before it's bottled. Uh, before you can't you can't screw it up anymore, unless you like leave it in the sun or something. So a little background on this. We had a bottling late November, right after harvest. I gave my phone to um, one of our social media people and she kind of just went around and took over 300 pictures and videos of a one day bottling. So hopefully <laughs> that will equate to something visually stimulating for you and therefore we should talk about that as it's part of the winemaking process it could vary from winery to winery like i said before winemaking there's tons of ways to make wine not everyone makes wine the same way but everyone does things in a general similar way um, the gist of what happens is the same Wine is moved from its storage vessel, in this case, barrels, and then bottled. Uh, so we start by racking our wines clean from our barrels that they've aged in, into tanks, uh, holding tanks for the bottling, uh, usually about a week before, just because we'll want to filter leading up to, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, next, we filter the wines. Either using a plate and frame filter or a crossflow filter, um, there's many different ways that you can filter your wine, or there's some people that just don't filter at all. And we can talk about the merits of that in another episode if you want me to. Just leave, leave that in the comments below. Either way, filtering is a long and arduous process, uh, especially if you're filtering t wines to be sterile, uh, because you're pulling out not only like chunks of things, not just that, microorganisms, uh, microbial growth, uh, their sterile filter goes through a 0.45 micron filter uh, so that all that yuckiness doesn't end up in the bottle. You dig? And rough filtering you could probably do a lead up of a month. Uh, that's just taking out any of the bigger solid chunks like I was telling you before, uh, sterile filtering should be within a couple days of bottling. Now, on the day of bottling, for us, a mobile bottling line comes in. The, it's a truck, it's a truck and trailer. It's really helpful for smaller wineries to have mobile bottling trucks because they just come in, uh, they'll take up a little bit of space, you get to focus on uh, getting your wine in, and then they leave at the end of the day leaving you with so much room to work on your wine. Bigger wineries have their own individual bottling lines at their 
at their facilities, which if you have the room and space to do it, that's awesome. But for small, smaller wineries, like the ones that I work for, it's better to have something that comes in and then leaves. Once the bottling starts, uh, wine is pulled from the tanks and is sent through the bottling lines filters, which is another reason why you want to filter beforehand because you don't want to clog up their filters or else they'll get really mad at you. Uh, the wine is then injected into bottles, as you can see here. Uh, then going down the line, it's corked if you're using corks, uh, and then capsuled. Some people use screw caps, some people will just use regular tin caps, and then the caps are placed on and then sealed. Following that, they're labeled. And then they go down this long track and end up put back in their case, taped up and stacked on a pallet, ready to ship or store. And that, my friends, is bottling. Now, if you have any additional questions about bottling, let me know in the comments below. Did you find this interesting? Did it demystify bottling wine for you? Let me know. Uh, please share, comment, like, and subscribe. And stick with us through the rest of the week because we'll be having some fun. All right, this has been Rewind. My name is B. Schwitty, and I will catch you next time.